Rules to Live By is an initiative to improve the prevention of fatalities in mining through industry outreach and education, followed by enhanced enforcement. The focus is on frequently cited standards in metal, non-metal mining that caused or contributed to fatal accidents in the mining industry. Operating speeds and control of equipment. One of the most significant causes of mobile equipment fatalities is loss of control. Leaving the roadway, over traveling berms, or operating on too great a slope or too great a speed for the conditions are common examples. Distracted driving, such as eating or talking on the radio or cell phone, is also a contributor. Machinery and equipment, brakes. Citations are often written for service or parking brakes on self-propelled mobile equipment. Service brakes must be capable of stopping and holding the equipment with its typical load on the maximum grade it travels. Parking brakes must be capable of holding under the same conditions. All braking systems installed on equipment must be maintained in a functional condition. Machinery and equipment, rollover protective structures, rocks, and seat belts. Machinery and equipment, seat belts for haulage trucks. This standard addresses a number of issues regarding rollover protective structures, ROPS construction, labeling, installation, alterations and exemptions, as well as seat belt construction. The topic of ROPS cannot be adequately addressed in this video and it is strongly recommended that you review this entire standard to determine if your equipment meets ROPS requirements. ROPS must meet specific construction and installation requirements and must be labeled appropriately. For specific information regarding ROPS, refer to this standard at the MSHA website. Contractors often receive citations for not having ROPS installed, for altering the ROPS structure, or for having a missing or unreadable label. Citations are often received for not having or wearing a seat belt in a haulage truck. MSHA expects contractors to periodically check operators to ensure seat belts are being worn. Other times, citations are received because the seat belt is not functional. Seat belts should be examined during the operator's pre-shift inspection. Parking procedures for unattended equipment. Mobile equipment should not be left unattended unless the controls are placed in the park position and the parking brake, if provided, is set. MSHA does not provide a definition for unattended. Useful interpretations that have been successful define unattended as when the operator cannot access the controls or when the operator is on the ground. When parked on a grade, the wheels or tracks of mobile equipment shall be either chopped or turned into a bank. Numerous citations have been written for this standard. Particular attention must be paid to unattended mobile equipment parked on a grade. To determine if you are on a grade, you can put the transmission in neutral. If the equipment rolls, you're on a grade. When on a grade, in addition to putting the controls in park and setting the parking brake, you must chalk the wheels or turn them into a berm or bank. As an alternative to chocks or berms, you may position the front or rear wheels in a ditch or trough. This standard applies to all off-road and on-road self-propelled equipment used on mine property, including vehicles such as vans, suburbans, and pickup trucks. It also includes vendors, visitors, and contractors. Work on power circuits. Before working on power circuits, they must be de-energized. Power switches must be locked out 
and suitable warning notices posted at the power switch to prevent the equipment from being energized without the knowledge of the individuals working on it. If the circuit must remain energized, use hotline tools. Procedures during repairs or maintenance. When conducting repairs or performing maintenance on machinery or equipment, make sure the power is off and all forms of motion and energy have been blocked. Energy sources that can cause motion include gravity, hydraulic power, pneumatic power, and electricity. Consider how you can prevent each of these energy sources from causing motion. Machinery, equipment, and tools used beyond design capacity. When machinery, equipment, or tools are designed, they are constructed to be used within their certain limits. Using them beyond this design limit can create hazards. Examples of use beyond design capacity include lifting a load beyond a crane's capacity, using a cheater bar on a wrench, or operating machinery at a speed or RPM greater than the manufacturer's intention. Personal protection, safety belts and lines. When working from elevated areas where there is danger of falling, safety belts and lines are to be worn. If you're working in bins, tanks, or other dangerous areas, a second person similarly equipped must tend the lifeline of the other. Notice that MSHA regulations require the wearing of fall protection equipment when there is a danger of falling. MSHA standards do not specify a minimum height above which fall protection must be worn. Bins, hoppers, silos, tanks, and surge piles. When work requires entering bins, hoppers, tanks, silos, and surge piles, where loose, unconsolidated materials are, the supply and discharge of materials must be stopped and locked out before anyone enters. Persons entering the facility must wear a harness and lifeline that is suitably fastened. In addition, a second person similarly equipped must be stationed such that the lifeline of the first person can be constantly adjusted to reduce slack and keep the lifeline tight. Persons shall stay clear of suspended loads. Suspended loads create hazards in different ways. Anyone who works around suspended loads should be aware that loads can fall or perhaps swing free, causing severe crushing injuries or fatalities. A good practice that prevents someone from wandering into an area where a load is suspended is to erect a barricade around the lift area. People in general have a tendency to try to control suspended loads by pushing or pulling. When this occurs, they place themselves in harm's way. If a suspended load needs to be controlled, use tag lines while staying a safe distance away from falling or swinging actions. Barricades and warning signs. Some areas may contain safety and health hazards that aren't immediately obvious. Conditions such as hazardous vapors, loose ground, high noise areas, materials, equipment, or persons working overhead are examples. When these conditions exist, they must be barricaded and have warning signs posted that display the nature of the hazard and provide information about any protective action required. 